Uh, next, we have Gabriella Di Piazza, who is the Vice President of NFV Products and Solutions at VMware. VMware is kind of involved in this space, so uh, Gabrielle, welcome. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, so as Michael, as Michael described, I'm actually uh, based out here in Palo Alto, so local. Um, a bit about VMware, I guess you obviously know the company as a virtualization provider uh, across the board, but we uh, investing heavily in the telco and FV market uh, for a couple of reasons. Of course, virtualization or network function virtualization represents a, uh, um, a very large opportunity. But I think there's a more strategic intent uh, where we believe telcos will become uh, an essential part of the uh, delivery uh, in a, a, or a cloud delivery value chain, uh, especially with 5G coming to play or uh, in, a, in the future of distributed cloud. So I think there's an aspect in uh, addressing this market uh, from an opportunity perspective, but there's an aspect of how you can actually partner and evolve this market in a true distributed cloud. Um, and also, we, uh, you know, we are obviously an NAV infrastructure provider. As a matter of fact, we work with many of the VNF vendors uh, here, right? We work, you know, under on, on Metaswitch uh, and on uh, with Versa. We work with Metaswitch, obviously. Uh, um, we work with uh, uh, Nuage as well, believe it or not. We have actually a couple of uh, joint projects. Uh, on non-KVM environments. Um, but uh, what I'd like to discuss today, so I will not go into the detail of uh, what is the CPE or universal CPE and so forth. I think we have uh, a lot of depth in our speakers about here. What I'd like to discuss is a little bit uh, what we see happening in the world of cloud or multi-cloud. The reason I'd like to do this is because um, I think we are at that point where we discuss the build out of a telco cloud where there's been a lot of focus on telco, not so much of a focus on cloud. Um, and in fact, you know, uh, if you see even a couple of the previous presentation, there's a lot of, lot of depth in the protocols, the functions, and so forth. That is absolutely correct. Uh, in fact, this is one of the most complex uh, marriages, I would say, that we are uh, probably experiencing out there. Uh, but I'd like to try to put some consideration in terms of what's happening, what we're seeing in uh, the evolution of cloud, in a multi-cloud environment, um, distribution of clouds, management, orchestration, uh, some of this uh, in the context of, of this uh, component. So let me jump to a point. Uh, we start to see an evolving ecosystem for business services. I think it was very interesting, the presentation this morning from at and where even a universal CPE is not anymore just seen as a universal CPE, but it's also a micro cloud. And we see many of our customers going way beyond the connectivity aspect, yes, as the one as a, an enabling technology, but we discuss you know, security, firewalling, and so forth. We actually start to see uh, um, the, this trend as an opportunity to capture a new market, which is the ability to actually go beyond connectivity and provide and provision uh, cloud-based connectivity, including compute, including networking, and so forth. I think many of the carriers uh, uh, are in uh, you know, major need of new revenue streams. So this really represents a new revenue stream. Uh, I also think that what the way is uh, evolving right now, obviously there's a lot of IT and private cloud being built out over the course of the years. Uh, uh, telco cloud undergoing a major transformation in core, edge, uh, upcoming, uh, of course, hosting clouds and public cloud. So we start to see the, uh, not just the implementation, but also the movement of applications and VNFs across these three environments. Um, I also don't want to mislead. Of course, we're not going to see in the near term a full-blown implementation of a mobile core uh, with low latency in a public cloud environment. But we are already working with different carriers where they are building uh, uh, for GLTE, looking ahead of 5G infrastructure, 
applications for IoT, connected bikes, connected cars, where some of the application is built in public cloud. The mobile core is built in the private cloud. But there are opportunities for roaming purposes and so forth to actually move across and overflow across different clouds. Um, what I'm trying to, to capture here is that uh, there's an aspect of building VNFs, but I actually think that uh, this is also a, uh, a great opportunity for carriers to finally open up their network as a hosting or as an, as an edge infrastructure to provide a whole set of new services. Uh, new set of new services being analytics, being collection of data at the edge, and uh, not necessarily this being the VNF placed there, but the enablement of how to actually deliver and create services at the edge. Um, I think um, and this is a very, very superficial, easy picture. If you look at the complexity of what it means, look at what you have in your IT cloud, everybody's done this over time, managed cloud, hosting, uh, uh, private cloud provisioning, uh, operator services cloud, you know, SD1, CP, universal CDN, and different apps at the edge. If you start to see what's happening on the public cloud, I think the main point I'd like to raise here is, what needs to happen to actually have that cloud and services interoperability? Creating an application, ability to move an application, ability to create networking across, uh, uh, or policies <coughs> across, uh, because otherwise if you don't unify the functions that you see on the top of the slides here, you really do not have a cloud. You're just rebuilding an application in another virtualized silo, which is not what a cloud is. Uh, actually found very interesting that even the previous presentation had somehow uh, um, a very similar picture. So I think this is a topic coming up over and over, right? It's not just about, oh, now I can place a CPE half here yeah. on the edge, in the cloud and so forth. But how do you uh, seamlessly manage this? Seamlessly uh, uh, orchestrate? How do you manage security, governance, policy, and so forth? Um, it might seem like a secondary problem, but you start to see the scale when you start to have thousands of hundreds of thousands of millions of customers, then you start to lose the economy of scales and the advantages then uh, the cloud provides. The other aspect is that uh, we also believe, of course, as VMware, that uh, uh, the, you really reach total cost of ownership and ROI if you're able to have multi-services on the same cloud. Uh, therefore, we start to see some of the most successful uh, uh, carriers implementing a platform policy where they are able to actually add services over time, right? And we've seen some of them, uh, they actually rebuilt uh, a silo not being as successful at this point for cost reasons. Uh, technology being only one aspect, operational transformation and people uh, is also a major aspect there. Uh, what do we see on the horizon here? What are the evolution requirements from, from a cloud perspective? Um, discussed a little bit private and public cloud. Um, in order to deliver effective services, business services, I'm trying to go a little bit beyond the you know, SD1CP scenario here. We actually start to see, uh, first of all, consolidated evolution requirements across wireless and wireless. This is interesting. Uh, second thing is uh, a radical change in the architecture of data center and cloud technologies in a move of having a much more of a virtualized function to the edge, close to the access. This is obviously required for you know, low latency, but also for a uh, type of workers that might uh, reside there for uh, you know, a week, a day, a month, an hour. So the ability to actually move and decommission uh, um, services uh, quickly. So highly distributed data center, closed loop service assurance, I'll talk more about it at the end. Uh, resource optimization, placement, balancing, high availability, hierarchical control. Um, I do think orchestration will change and will have to change. I think orchestration is just a, uh, a as we see today, orchestration is an evolution of what orchestration used to be from a telecom uh, provisioning world. 
Um, this is another aspect where cloud will have uh, um, much more to say in the future in, toward when there will be a full evolution towards cloud native and containers technologies. Um, again, service slicing, intent-based application placement, analytics will play a major, major driver there. Um, ubiquitous container and VM platforms, evolution towards OpenStack, a lot of discussions around this. OpenStack also being questioned uh, the moment you move closer to the edge, the moment your footprint uh, is not anymore a data center or a rack footprint, but needs to scale down into a, a, a footprint that might not uh, uh, be able to afford three servers to have an ins instance of OpenStack. Um, so anyhow, these are just some of the considerations that we see. And, uh, you know, just as a segue, we are already working on a set of projects right now in how to actually move towards a micro data center architecture. Um, optimized for multi-access, uh, one gig plus per subscribers. Uh, um, again, the idea of placing application closer, uh, but the problem is not just the once the application is there, is the automation of moving application towards the edge and of course monetize new services. Multi-access, edge computing, IoT, connect analytics and so forth. Uh, as I said, uh, this is not just about, of course, there will be a run build out, right? Uh, radio access, it will be built out on the edge, but I think the edge is not just to build the network functions, but to enable operators to operate and offer services by opening up their network as a true platform. Um, this is happening. I think we will see more. We are in a couple of very large deployments. Um, Asia Pacific is leading some of these. Some are actually happening on the U.S. territory as well. Very interesting. Uh, and just as a segue to this, that's what I'm seeing as an evolution. Today, and we had a lot of discussions this morning, right? Very, very simplified Etsy architecture. Uh, don't shoot at me, I just have my, take my marketing creativity on top of this. Uh, I think we are barely 20% there. Some people say, oh, we are you know, in a VM transition or in a VNF transition. Some carriers, of course, the TNT has been leading the pack in their numbers, 30, you know, 70% and so forth. I just spent two days with the major European carriers here in Palo Alto where they say we are basically zero, even though they're one of those logos that they were on the previous slide this morning as the founders of the uh, Etsy architecture. Uh, some bad choices, some political choices, and so forth. So my point I'm making is that we are undergoing a transition from physical to virtual. And a lot of the work we're doing right now is to work with many of the VNFs to actually make sure they are truly cloud ready because, before they even become cloud native. Right? They do not take advantage of any of the cloud readiness, uh, scaling, balancing, uh, distributed resource policies, affinity, and so forth. Right? Um, but what we start to see on the horizon, um, maybe I'm conservative, but that's why we are in these forums here. Right? Some people say, no, it's happening right now. Um, of course, we have some of the partners, you know, Metas, which have been here, one of the early uh, movers. We start to see the um, early interest in, if not fully cloud native application, if we discuss microservices and 12 factor apps and so forth, but at least applications repackaged under container format. Uh, because to me, just having different network functions packaged in a container is not a full cloud native application. The point I'm making here is how are you able to operate this under a common Vim? Because otherwise you do not have a common cloud. How are you able to operate this with a, as you can see on the top of the slide here, with a connection with your existing orchestrator or you do need to implement a separate orchestration? Just open questions, right? And I think where we're going is, uh, again, an evolution towards a mix of VM-based repackaged application, cloud native applications with a mix of VM-based and bare metal uh, uh, cloud native container applications. I forgot to add the public cloud aspect, some of the work we do with Pivotal and Google Cloud in taking Kubernetes in a, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a Kubernetes uh, container engine is interesting because you can actually have a multi-deployment across private, public, uh, virtualized, uh, uh, bare metal, and so forth. Um, 
But the point I'm making here is, and as you can see, I'm kind of moving the orchestration layer closer to the Vim layer. I'm just signaling the fact that to me, there will be a change in what orchestration means. Uh, are you service aware? Are you application aware? Uh, so there's much more of automation in, uh, uh, in this world, right? Um, I think this is something to take into consideration where uh, uh, now how, you, how are you going to orchestrate now between private and public clouds transparently and how you're going to operate based the same format uh, and the same policy and so forth. Uh, last slide on my point here. Uh, I don't think services are uh, there if they're not managed. I think there's a major impact on operations intelligence and OSS with virtualization. As VMware, we've been working now with 40 plus carriers in, uh, uh, in their implementations. It's been a, you know, interesting road in getting there. With some of them, we are scaling. With some of them, we are over 150 million subscribers in production. But there's been a lot of implementing and transforming and virtualizing. Uh, now we start to scratch the surface of what does it mean to actually have the OSS and operations management uh, and service assurance where most of the existing data sources from a fault management, performance management are disappearing, right? Uh, different type of discovery and reconciliation, different type of probing. Ingress and egress are not scalable anymore. Uh, this information needs to be rebuilt. As I said before, a lot of information inside the VNFs, right, provide the opportunity to even rethink the service assurance environments. Do you really need an external service assurance if you have a very effective and FBI management closed loop with orchestration? Just another example. Uh, capacity planning forecasting. Uh, capacity planning, um, I would say, in, Thanks to my previous experience, worked a lot in this space. Uh, very interesting, appealing, but also very static. Maybe not in the RAM world, but uh, now in a virtualized world, capacity planning is, uh, first of all, way more complex. It needs to be taken in consideration between dynamic and uh, hybrid in uh, uh, physical and virtual. And it's uh, uh, completely um, uh, data-driven uh, when predictive. Right, what happens from issue isolation? What you said before, isolation, already complex with IP technologies. Now you start to have another layer. Oh, compute, cloud, virtualization, storage, uh, uh, distribution, hypervisor, Vim, data model is changing and so forth, right? And then of course the uh, aspect of closed loop, uh, very, very little closed loop out there in a physical network. Uh, this is, I think, a great opportunity to really think of closed loop, right? Near real-time decisioning, uh, early warning evidence. Um, there are multiple, multiple layers, many discussions with KS around what does it mean to do automation. Automation at platform, infrastructure, orchestration, VNFM, and so forth. So there's, uh, I think this is a, uh, probably the beginning of a whole uh, uh, new rethinking of the OSS world in space.